biggest Indian media scandal in 2023. BJP alleges Congress ka hat news click ke saath. Congress ka hat news click ke saath news click ke upar China ka hat. To kis ka hat kaha kaha mila sab ko samaj aata hai. The Congress hits back. Calls the BJP's charges absurd. In any of our political parties, can be considered to be anti-Indian. We have a different view of how India should progress. Exclusive email of NewsClick funding accessed by India Today. <music> Journalism or G Hazuri of Xi Jinping. Chinese paisa to Indian news site. Has China infiltrated Indian politics and media? That's our top focus on India First. India today has accessed emails that show China tried to control the narrative, not just on border clashes with India, but even on farmer protests through Chinese propaganda disguised as independent content. Media entities and individuals are now under investigation for allegedly receiving money from China through shell companies and entities to carry out an anti-India propaganda drive and peddle Chinese narrative, not just on COVID-19 handling, but also on border clashes and farm protests. There is now a raging battle with some accusing those taking Chinese money to target India from Rafal to border clashes to COVID as treason. Will the Narendra Modi government probe and punish those guilty? Or is this, as some argue, absurd and a witch hunt? I'm Gaurav Savant. We get you all sides of the debate and the story. But first, as always, the headlines on India First. Day one of the fiery no-confidence debate in Parliament. Congress targets the Narendra Modi government on Manipur violence. BJP hits back taunts Rahul Gandhi and Sonia Gandhi on corruption and dynasty politics. Ahmadmi Party Member of Parliament Raghav Chadda faces a privileged motion over alleged forged signatures for proposed Select Committee on Delhi Services Bill. Six members of Parliament say their names were added without their consent. Rahul Gandhi's Ghar Vapsi day after being reinstated as Lok Sabha MP gets his 12 Tughlaq Lane bungalow back. Rahul Gandhi says, entire India is his home. Manipur police lodge an FIR against Assam Rifles personnel for reportedly obstructing police during violence breakout. In a district on the 5th of August, claims Assam Rifles allowed cookie militants to escape. Amidst rising crimes against women in Rajasthan, Ashok Gehlot government cracks down on rape accused issues, a ban on government job for all molestation and rape history sheeters. We begin India first with a big India Today expose. After the New York Times investigation bombshell, India Today has accessed emails that reveal how a news portal in India, News Click, was allegedly involved in promoting pro-China agenda, along with the Congress connection in a stunning revelation. Prakash Karat, left leader, senior left leader Prakash Karat's name has also emerged in these emails accessed by India today. And sources say this email exchange, it occurred during very significant period of situations in our country. India today's Munish Pandey brings you our top story. India Today unravels Congress-China link. 
a day after the government lashed out at the Congress and news website NewsClick. Email exchanges have now emerged showing how Chinese propagandists were in direct touch with media in India. This is billionaire Neville Roy Singham, who has been accused of Chinese propaganda, emailing NewsClick director Prabir Purkhayas and CPM leaders like Prakash Karat with a Praise China toolkit. Sources tell India Today these email exchanges occurred during significant periods, including the early days of the COVID outbreak, during farmer protests in India, and the persisting border tensions between India and China. The way these emails were structured, it clearly reveals a clear inclination towards promoting Chinese propaganda. The email conversations recorded by the enforcement directorate during the searches not only talk about how to keep China in a good light as far as its pandemic handling is concerned, but it also talks about some of the sensitive issues like India-China border. But the most important part is the email conversation with CPIM leader Prakash Karat and the Bharati Janta Party has not only targeted opposition over this, but they have also raised this matter before the parliament. Not just that, in stunning revelation, emails also talk about collaborations of the Indian communists with the Chinese. Sources say Prakash Karat expressed his satisfaction with the Chinese peace, despite knowing anti-China sentiments. यदि न्यूज क्लिक का नाम यदि डिलीट या रेस्टोर हो गया, कांग्रेस को क्या समस्या है सर? न्यूज क्लिक आपका कौन लगता है? पुरकास्त का नाम यदि रेस्टोर हो गया, पुरकास्त आपका क्या लगता है? प्रकाश कारत साहब, उनका पूरा का पूरा मेल, मैं ऑन रिकॉर्ड आपको लाना चाहता हूँ कि जो वो नेवली राय सिंगम था, उसके साथ उनके हजारों मेल हैं और जब आप कहेंगे मैं ऑन रिकॉर्ड उसको पेश कर दूंगा सर। The government has now sharpened its attack on the Congress. Congress का हाथ News Click के साथ, Communist, बाकी दल ये भी उनका सहयोग करते रहे, लेकिन Congress का हाथ News Click के साथ, News Click के ऊपर China का हाथ। तो किसका हाथ कहाँ कहाँ मिला है सबको समझ आता है। कल जो है सर न्यूज क्लिक के ऊपर बड़ा हंगामा हुआ। The Congress meanwhile has strongly objected to the comment made by the BJP leaders, calling them defamatory and demanding that the allegations made by Nishikant Dube in Parliament must be expunged. The mic of a particular BJP member, Mr. Dube, was switched on and he proceeded to speak, and his sound was the only one coming through the translation headsets and through the uh, uh, the record of the House in which he levelled defamatory and libelous accusations against our party and by name two of its leaders. He cannot do so without giving notice in advance and getting the consent of the Speaker, which he had not done. With more and more evidence emerging of the China news click nexus to peddle Xi propaganda, the political fight is also heating up. With Munish Pandey in Delhi, Bureau Report, India Today. And India today's Munish Pandey, he's accessed these emails from Neville Singham uh, to several individuals in India and their names are a matter of investigation. So they are actually being coached and guided on what to say, what to write. How, how does this nexus work, this email clincher of news click? India today has accessed information on funding. China is alleged to have used this news portal in India to meddle in India's internal affairs. Email trail, Enforcement Directorate has accessed these email trails that actually expose this conspiracy. Chinese mail to left leaders in India and Prakash Karat's name has emerged in public domain. The timing of these emails praise China and China's handling of COVID Remember what was happening in India, how a certain uh, section was targeting India on COVID or the border standoff with China. Also, the Rafale fighter deal and we'll talk about that in greater detail. 
There are emails to political leaders. There are emails to journalists. Was this a dictation from Beijing to peddle Chinese agenda from COVID to farm protest to border standoff with China? Chinese propaganda disguised as independent content as claimed by the New York Times. Joining me on India First is Aprajita Sarangi, BJP MP. Dr. Shama Mohammed represents the Congress Party on the broadcast. And I also have with me Sushant Sareen, Senior Fellow at the Observer Research Foundation, someone who's tracking this very closely. But I want to begin by asking you, Dr. Shama Mohammed, are these emails proof of China dictating a certain narrative? Union Information and Broadcasting Minister Anurag Thakur says news click Congress and China are linked through an anti-India umbilical cord, ma'am. See, Anurag Thakur is basically a joke. He's the man who said, no, goli maro salo ko. So I'm not going to listen to him. Now, first and foremost, who broke the story? The New York Times. Now, the New York Times is New York Times, The Guardian, Washington Post, Economic Times, according to the Bhatia Janta Party, are anti-nationals. Because when the New York Times spoke about the, during the COVID time against Mr. Narendra Modi and what he did not do, when the New York Times says there is no democracy in India, when the New York Times says that the Muslims are hunted down in India, at that point of time, the BJP says, we do not listen to New York Times. They are anti-national. Now, I want to know, why did Anurag Thakur take a story from New York Times and is believing that such a story? You can't have double standards, number one. Number two, I want to ask Mr. Anurag Thakur, you said something just now, Gaurav Savant, you said, Pedal Chinese narrative. That was the uh, that was what you just now said. Who peddled Chinese narrative? Mr. Narendra Modi. Na koi gusa hai, na koi gusega. Uh, when after 20 of our soldiers were martyred, okay. Narendra Modi said nobody entered into Indian territory and no military post was taken. Exactly what the Chinese said. Wait, I'm not finished. Let me finish my point. And at that point. We also know that they banned a couple of apps and those were TikTok, there was something called Me Community and various others. After that, COVID happened. And what did Mr. Narendra Modi do? He started something called the PM Cares and says it's a private fund. But when he okay. solicited money... You haven't, solicited answered, my I asked you a, I asked no, you haven't answered my question. I asked you I asked you a question. You haven't answered. No, ma'am, I will not no, let I you digress from the debate that I have asked you. Point. But the questions you've raised, I will get Aprajita Sarangi but of I the BJP to respond. Point, Hold on. Ma'am, it cannot be a long monologue. You've made a point. Let me get Aprajita Sarangi to respond. Ma'am, hold on. I'm coming back to you. No point wasting time on this. Aprajita Sarangi, Congress has called all these claims absurd. If investigations have actually been carried out since 2021, what action has been taken post these investigations? And the Congress asked, you believe the New York Times today? You didn't believe them during COVID times when they raised all the issues that, uh, that uh, Dr. Shama Mohammed talks about. Aprajita Sarangi. See, whatever has been spoken in the Lok Sabha and thereafter by the Minister of Information and Technology, Mr. Anurag Thakur, are nothing but the truth. And I think the Congress should have the courage to accept what has come out in the New York Times. See, there is a report from Heidenberg and they actually create a ruckus in the Lok Sabha talking about Adani and within quotes, its misdeeds. So they cannot have double standards. Just before the start of a parliament session, they bring that report from a particular foreign organization and they talk about Adani and the organization's misdeeds, I reiterate, within quote. But at the same time, when New York Times on 5th of August, 2023 brings out a report saying that one Neville Roy Singham got funding to the tune of 38 crore from China and in turn he gave this entire, he made this entire funding to News Click and then in fact everything was traced to the, 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 the love of Congress for China and the love of the Communist Party for China. I think this is something which uh, smacks of uh, uh, arrogance and okay. this also speaks of double standards. So I think this is a very serious matter and I must say security of our country is of utmost concern and this China Congress and news click 
are indeed part of a sinister design to destabilize the country Let me and bring to in Sushant kind Sarin. of you know weaken Prime Minister Modi's government through rumors. Yeah. Let me bring in Sushant Sarin for more on this. Sushant Sarin, the emails, the New York Times report, the money trail. Does it indicate a very dangerous cocktail, even on issues of national security, peddling the Chinese agenda, for example, on border clashes or on Rafal, Sushant Sarin? So, got a couple of things. The first, uh, and I'm, I'm sure uh, Dr. Shama Mohammed will take it in the right spirit, because this is her question, which I'm throwing back at her. Uh, there are people like me who still don't take the New York Times seriously, and I'll explain it to her why. But if she takes the New York Times very seriously on all the other reportage of the New York Times on India, then why does she not take this particular report of the New York Times seriously enough? Number one. Number two, the fact of the matter remains that, you know, the New York Times actually quotes from the ED mm -hmm. investigation. Absolutely. So, in fact, I also got it wrong. Then I read both of those things clearly and very, uh, you know, uh, it, it was very clear it came that it was the ED investigation which actually brings out this entire nexus. The ED should have taken it to the next level. Perhaps if we were everything that the New York Times accuses India of being and of this government of being, then the news click, uh, you know, would have the guys would have been in jail for espionage, for, for spying, for working as foreign agents, uh, like some other people have already gone to prison. Uh, and I think uh, that in itself tells you a lot about uh, the kind of propaganda which the New York Times carries out because uh, it does not serve its ideological predilections, this particular government. But having said that, Gaurav, I think uh, this is, number one, a very old problem. You know, in the old days, in the 70s, for example, the Americans used to bring out a magazine called Imprint, which was really very slickly produced. Uh, and yes. it was, again, very subtle propaganda. But so this, this is not subtle propaganda. Going on for years on end. Yes, this right? is not so subtle at all. That. These are instructions. These emails show instructions to Indian no, no, media no. entities. It is not subtle. It's almost like an order to no, them. No. Exactly. So what I'm trying to tell you is that, look, number one, these kind of influence operations, the, the Russians used to do it, the KGB used to do it. And of course, the communists in India being useful idiots, were always ready and to offer themselves and, and for nothing more than crumbs very often. In this case, of course, it says, uh, fat lots of money have been given to yes. these guys. Uh, I don't know what the communists, because Mr. Karat and company pretend that they are, uh, you know, they don't really need any money. But clearly the amount of monies which have been given to this particular organization and no, apparently one Dr. of the Shab guys who named is one of their nephews. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know what, what the quid pro quo out there is. But no, the what is the quid pro quo? Target India, Dr. Shama Mohammed. Look at, look at this email. Do not circulate any of these materials outside this group. So-and-so must have content uh, and control over this. It's an instruction that's coming to Indians from uh, people who are getting money from China. Dr. Shama Mohammed, the foreign media okay, investigation so, so, also says so let, hundreds of millions of dollars. Hundreds let, let of not. millions of dollars were pumped to entities linked to this uh, to Neville Singham to peddle Chinese government talking points. The emails show at, those talking Gaurav, points Gaurav, were sent to Indian Gaurav. media and to Indian politicians. Gaurav, there are some analysts exactly. who say this amounts to treason, madam. Treason. Yeah, treason. I'll tell you what is treason. Now, let me explain to you what is treason. Before that, to Mr. Sarin, like he mentioned, why is Shama not believing whatever is written? My I point is, ma'am, please respond to my questions. Your first I answer wasn't a response to my question. My I request have, to I you is, to please respond you, to my Gaurav, question. I'm answering you. So I'm telling him that even the BJP has to, they can't have double standards. I don't have double standards. Now, he's saying you're talking, Gaurav, of an investigation. Now, let me tell you what happened in PM Cares. Why did the Prime Minister... Ma'am, my question is not on PM know. Cares so today. I am gotta, sorry. Gotta, gotta, my question gotta, is very no, direct. Madam, we will have another no, debate if I you want on PM Cares on another day. No, madam. So to, my debate is on these the emails case, today. No, no. My request is, Dr. Shama Mohammed. please, please respond to the questions I'm asking I you, ma'am. I will respond. So I'm answering that question. Now, Gaurav, if you're too excited and you want to support the Prime Minister... I do not want to support. I want to support my country and I expect every Indian to do so. I'm answering your question. You cannot come and bulldoze me like this, yeah? This is not done, Gaurav. Behave. Behave as I'm an I'm sorry, Aprajita Sarangi. Who are these think, individuals think, and entities think, think who are in Gaurav, violation? Madam, my debate is not on PM cares today. Let's be very clear. My debate is on these emails, please. 
Who are these individuals and entities? And if this is a violation of the law of the land, what has the Narendra Modi government done since 2021 if the ED carried out its investigation in 2021? See, in 2021, ED had carried out the investigations. And I think we are all aware of the fact that these people, Congress and uh, the uh, left leaders, were extremely uncomfortable with the behavior of the investigating agencies. So I, I fail to understand why should they squirm. Couple of things, you know, let me just put certain things before you. Number one, there are questions which I think the Congress needs to answer. What was Rahul Gandhi doing? He was with Chinese diplomats when Doklam happened, number one. Number two, Rajiv Gandhi Foundation has received funds from China. Yes, ma'am, yes but my no. question and is, ma'am, my question is on these aware, emails. Then what, if these then emails what were with funds? the Narendra Modi government and the ED since 2021, what action has been taken? This is now 2023 August. Look, this is a very serious matter and the investigation is on. We are on the job. So right now on the TV channel, I cannot say what's happening to that. But I'm sure the government has taken the entire thing very seriously. Now, I mean, I must uh, put before you the linkage between Congress and China. Congress's love for China. China, which at this moment is an enemy of India. And then I think in Cambridge, please recall the way Rahul praised China. I think we cannot forget that. And in 2008, Congress party has signed an agreement, an MOU with, uh, with uh, CPC, with the Communist Party of China for the enhancement of Chinese interests. Don't forget that. And I reiterate in 2021, when the investigating agencies okay. had raided news click, at that point of time, these people had become very uncomfortable. And then now here are the males that you are talking of. Dr. Shama Mohammed. Prakash Karat and the people who have been mentioned. So I think this is definitely a sinister design and the government is well aware of it and the government is acting on it. Sushant Sareen, the additional solicitor general, Devang Vyas, appeared for the NIA in Bombay High Court. He argued urban Naxals were complementary part of rural armed struggle and urban Naxals arranged logistics and manpower and funds. Sir, this was said while opposing bail to a certain Gautam Navlakha. He is alleged to have received these Chinese funds and we are showing that money trail as claimed by the enforcement directorate, sir. So if, if serious, if true, this is very, very serious, very, very dangerous, Sushant Sareen. Gaurav, uh, quite clearly, you know, if you look at the ED report, it's a slam dunk. But what is surprising is, and I think the ED got after these guys on the basis of that Bhima Koregaon case. Uh, if somebody has any other information, please correct me. Now, unfortunately, I think what the ED has focused on, and I believe there is a case underway right now against these guys, News Click fellows, but that's on the on, on charges of money laundering. Yes. What about charges of acting as influence agents of a hostile foreign country, acting on behalf of a hostile foreign country, planting news on behalf of a hostile foreign country? Is there or is there not a law against something like that in this country? If there is not, then there should be a law. After all, the government, and I think that is something good that this government has been doing, it's been pilloried for it. But I think in retrospect, especially after this particular incident, it's something very good which this government has done by cracking down on sources of foreign funding to news organizations, to think tanks. Uh, I work in a think tank and I can tell you it is with so much of care that every single account is maintained, for okay. example, in the ORF and in many of the other think tanks. So there is a massive uh, kind of a scrutiny on uh, foreign funds which are coming in for NGOs, for missionaries, for you name the thing, right? Why is a Chinese organization funding a news organization which is not making money in India? What is the reason for investment? Now, and this is not just the Singham fellow who's working for the Chinese. Let's talk. Now you bring in the entire George Soros network in this. You know, it's it's been it's been floated as a conspiracy theory, but quite clearly it's not a conspiracy theory. We very often see journalists attached to the George Soros Foundation, George Soros uh, organizations and his money asking questions in the U.S. State Department, which again target India. We've seen this across the board. Okay. Now, 
So these are operations which are going on. The government is cracking down on it. But in this particular case, why they haven't slapped on charges of uh, espionage against these fellows? And uh, that is something, that is something, Aprajita Sarangi, this, this cannot just be a political point or a press conference. If these charges are true, then an FIR needs to be filed, legal action taken to a logical conclusion, madam. Because Congress MP Shashi Tharoor, he says charges leveled by the BJP are absurd. The Congress says they are taking on the BJP for not being tough on China after Galwan. For peddling, you know, as Dr. Shama Mohammed was just saying, uh, for saying, na koi ghusa hai, na koi ghusaya hai. How is the Congress peddling Chinese agenda is the question they ask. Aprajita Sarangi. See, I have mentioned earlier that the security of the... Yes, I have mentioned earlier that the security of the country is our utmost priority and there cannot be any kind of compromise. You mentioned, I mentioned, in fact, in 2021, ED was on the job, ED is on the job, and in fact, we have taken it very seriously. The work is on. And in fact, what I am trying to hint at is there is an anti-India design. There is a Break India initiative by all these people who have been rightly pointed out as, you know, who are all part of one umbilical cord. So I think uh, the whole Ministry of Home Affairs is seized of the matter and all the investigating agencies are on the job. We have Sushan taken Sarin. it very seriously. Okay, okay. It remains to be seen whether this is taken to its logical conclusion and whether there's a time frame. Sushant Sarin, the peddling of Chinese agenda hasn't just been restricted to border clashes. The same individual wrote in the same news portal, even on the Rafale fighter jet deal, the same fighters that the Indian Air Force has so strongly backed. China would not want India to have these latest fighter jets. And were so many within our country, Sushant Sarin, trying to stall that process and that procurement? Yeah, and that is the unfortunate part, you know. Uh, and, and, you know, it, it pains me to say this because uh, the Congress Party has been traditionally been the standard bearer of Indian nationalism in this country, right? Yes. It was the party of national interest. It was the party of governance in this country. And to see the kind of decline in the Congress Party, the kind of... Uh, agendas they have started backing, agendas which are clearly anti-India, the kind of rhetoric they indulge in, it pains somebody like me who was at least at one point of time a very strong Congress supporter, right? Uh, and a lot of people have moved away from the Congress party precisely because of this reason that they seem to be pushing dubious agendas. And, and, and quite clearly, when the Congress party made a big deal out of the Rafal's uh, issue, which was essentially a government-to-government -government sale. Now, either you are saying that, you know, the Indian government was paying the French president of that time uh, a certain bribe to get these aircraft, which was utter nonsense, of course. Uh, it was very clear that this was a deal which, uh, whose time had come, in fact, okay. whose time had come many, many years back. Uh, for 20 years, we had been going around the bush to yes. try and get these aircraft and we were flying those flying coffins called MiG-21s. I think it's shameful for a country like India to be flying those damn aircraft and, and, and then we saw what happened, you know, later Do you on. You know, they were excellent at one point of time. You're absolutely right, MiG-21s, but uh, right now, and, so, the Rafals... These, these people have... These aircraft have spooked the Pakistanis, they spooked the Chinese. So, obviously, the Chinese would want to, you know, muddy the waters every time there is some new equipment going to come in and who better to use than these useful idiots we, in the Indian media who will push a certain agenda either knowingly or okay. unknowingly. In this case, you know, it seems... Either knowingly it or unknowingly it or was it all this money, all this money that's being talked about if crores and crores were being paid, then there would be a money trade and let's see if legal action backed by evidence follows or are these just political charges that are leveled in the run up to 2024 elections aprajita sarangi we would be tracking the story very very closely dr shama mohammed aprajita sarangi and sushant sarin for joining me here on india first many thanks coming up next is business today with nabila jamal Everyone has an opinion, but I have the 